just there because it seems like his head is back in the fight. Some blood from the mouth of Davis. We saw a moment ago when Williams got on the inside, Davis landed a good uppercut. There is no question, Dave, that, that the fight for Davis is to be on the inside. The uppercuts have been good evidence of it, and also the fact that the speed of Williams uh, and given Williams the maneuverability on the outside is also giving evidence of that fact. is trying to, to counter with that left took over the top. Just missed one the moment ago. He's letting Williams come out of him. The thing, though, is if Williams jams his way in, it's a different story. And there you see him jam his way in. That's two to the head. He's got the left hook to the body. And if he keeps the left hand moving, then Davis cannot get the counter goal. chance of getting Davis out of here. Well, big round here for Jeremy Williams, as the previous two have been. Davis missing with a wild right hand for the body. There's the left hook. I talked about that one, missing. Williams is trying to do it with one shot here. Well, Williams clunking him a bit by coming in with his gloves down. And now on the inside, Davis mostly holding. So round three is over. over the top. That was that counter left hook that just missed by uh, by Davis. He's been trying to set that punch up, and it hasn't quite gotten there. Well, we're into round four. Jeremy Williams, the young heavyweight prospect from uh, Long Beach, California, came in here 19 and one with 16 KOs. So far, is uh, doing quite well against Everton Davis. And there's good advice in the corner. Then there's just verbiage in the corner. And I thought between rounds that Joe Goose had really outlined it for him exactly where he wanted him to be, exactly what distance he should be at, and basically the motivation and the strategy to keep going in this fight. Well, you see Williams landing jabs, and he's been doing it, hasn't he? He cannot be beat when he gets that jab going like that. A tremendous edge in there, and with the power punches as well. Jeremy Williams' his biggest obstacle right now would be complacency. Well, he comes in here after beating Levi Billups, Mark Wills, beat Bert Cooper here on our air, also Andrew Stokes. That was following the loss to Donald. Coming in with his hand very low, which he can get away with in this fight, whether he will in others, remains to be seen. Good right hand by Williams. He got it in there despite the low hand, but he could jab his way in and get it in there as well without the risk. Excellent double left hook to the body by Williams. Davis still trying to land that hook, it just isn't getting there. A lot of blood for the mouth from Everton Davis. And Williams tried to give himself a little distance by going to the outside a little bit after. It seemed like he was crowding himself inside. Past 
the halfway point here in round four here from the Grand Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles. This is often the case. Luminaries abound. Gene Hackman's in the audience. Robert Wall, a fine actor. And you're here as well. Now that capped it off. That was it. The celebrities and movie stars love to gather around here. <laughs> Williams trying the uppercut from way back. Not a good move, but he was not countered with it. Just about a half minute left. Look at that bomb. A right hand by Davis sends Williams down. Two jabs in the right hand. All of a sudden, Davis brings the jab out of North Ball. That's why you don't want your left hand at your waist, huh? So was Williams hurt or was it a flash knockdown? He looks disgusted with himself. Well, he probably should be. But Jeremy Williams has good foot speed. He's using it and takes a left hook. So the plot thickens here in L.A. Don't go away, folks. Second quarter, Bud Light's moving the ball. Dropping back, 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 back. He can't find anyone. He's looking. He's looking. He's going deep. Hope he brings back some blood. <laughs> At the half, Bud Light leads Budweiser 21 to 14. Get your Bud Bowl game card where you buy Bud and Bud Light for your chance to win $1 million. Thank you, man. You're getting way too into this. <laughs> Saturday, January 28th, it's Destruct and Destroy. Rafael Ruelas puts his IBF Junior Lightweight Championship on the line. Plus, his older brother, Gabriel, makes his first defense of his WBC Super Featherweight Crown. Plus, Jake the Snake Rodriguez defends his IBF Junior Welterweight Championship against Constantine Sue. Destruct and Destroy, Saturday, January 28th, live on Pay-Per-View. Well, we got excitement here. You'll also have basketball excitement. Super Tuesday, Big Ten matchup, Illinois and Purdue. And for the SEC, a very good one. Eighth-ranked Kentucky and 13th-ranked Florida. That's Tuesday here on ESPN. How about this, Dave Bontempo? Well, when you don't put away a guy early, as Jeremy Williams did not, maybe the ghost comes back to get you. And that's what happened in the back of the head. The two jabs and the right hand in the back of the head. Davis sets it up with the jab, and Williams is leaning down anyway, then catches it behind the head. Good sequence for Everton Davis. We head into round five, and maybe just as important, the sequence at the end of the round where he had Williams against the ropes. They were wailing away, both hitting late after the bell. This round, Jeremy Williams comes out like he wants to try and end it. Well, big point psychologically for Davis. More than the knockdown did for him on scorecards, what it does is it lifted his confidence another level, and at the end of the round, he really had it going well. In the fourth round, Williams still has the edge in the numbers, Davis with the big one. That's why judges may see it as a 10-line round rather than 10-8. To the outside, not quite getting it there. They pointed out the jab, helped set up that right hand before. I called it 10-9 for whatever that's worth in round four. If you're scoring at home, you call it 10-8. You have it a little, little bit closer. The knockdown comes at the end of the round, a round which Williams seemingly had been winning for that point. So Jeremy Williams, after having dominated the first three and a half rounds, takes another left hook from Davis. Well, now crank those hooks. He's making something happen. 